Hi, everybody. My name is Gina Cavalier. This is the Liberated Healer Podcast. (laughs) (laughs) And we have Megan Ulrichs on with us. Nice to meet you. Hi, and your pooch. Nice to meet both of you. They wanted to be vocal today. I I think it's kind of funny. There's a lot of wind here. So, um, hi. Hi, it's so good to see you. You too. So um, can you tell us a little bit about your background and your journey and your company and this lovely book that I found the other day and I'm so excited to get into? Yes, thank you. Wow. So let's see, back background without making this a two hour long um, answer is my background was originally in conventional nutrition. So undergrad was in nutrition and exercise science. Mm. And it wasn't until my middle son, who at the time was four and about to get kicked out of preschool at a Montessori school, mind you, who's very liberal and um, forgiving, that we realized, and especially I realized, okay, he's being told he needs to be on medication for ADHD. He's about to get kicked out of a school. Something's got to give here. Yeah. And so naturally I went to alternative um, options and it all boiled down to food. Um, and so after many attempts, many months, maybe even a year later after adjusting our entire family's diet, I had so many people saying, what is your son on? He's so calm. And my answer was, he's not on anything. He's off of junk food and on a more natural diet. So that led me down a huge path of uh, natural health, healing, herbs. And and it was self-taught because I was an at-home mom at the time. But I finally decided I'm gonna get my master's degree in holistic nutrition. It was between that or um, botanicals and herbology. Mm-hmm. And so I naturally delved deep into holistic nutrition because it combined both. Um, during that time in my master's degree, I was also seeing patients at a naturopathic clinic and um, consulting on nutrition, how to heal through food, how to listen to your body's dis-ease and um, change your lifestyle and your diet to improve your well-being and radiance. Yeah. And um, and also in that time, my skincare company was born, Glow Luxury Oils, and that was out of a selfish need and out of a passion for formulating and botanicals. So it sort of all came together like this. And I was like, wait a minute. After a few years of consulting on nutrition and lifestyle changes and then um, creating this formula for skin, all of my clients were like, um, can you tell me what I should be using on my skin? You know, you tell me that if I don't use natural ingredients in my skincare, then my liver is going to get congested and my hormones are going to, you know, become sluggish and off balance. And so I would share with them some things they should use. And they're like, well, what are you using? I want what you're using. And so I kind of kept it my own little secret at the time because it just was out of a selfish need. And, um, and then over time I kept getting asked and I would give out a little bit. And then finally friends and family were like, yeah, yeah, this is selfish for you to not birth into the world and share. So everything sort of came to me and I said, yes. And trusted that instinct and that feeling of excitement every time the opportunity arose for me. Um, so Glow Luxury Oils went from one product to now 21 and a cookbook to sort of bring it all together from that inside out approach. And I've been using some of your things that I've been getting at the store and I, I the, it definitely is very clean, um, pure, energetically as well. It's, you know, when you get something, it's like you can feel all the chemicals or overuse of, um, you know, scents or whatever that Mm -hmm. are not good for you. So, um, I really appreciate that. So, um, I think too, you can feel energetically when something is mass produced or when there's a tired maker behind the product. I'm, I think like you very energetically sensitive 
And with each product and batch that I formulate, there's a real, um, a certain intention that goes into them and each bottle is blessed. And for me as the maker, I have to have the perfect ambiance that works for fueling my creativity. Yeah. So the music's gotta be right. I sage, I Palo Santo. I have to also be, you know, well nourished and in that creative flow mm -hmm. to then infuse and bless each bottle after batching. And so to me, that's really important to send these little babies out into the world with yeah. healing energy in them. I feel like you can always tell no matter what you do, even if you're at a restaurant, you can tell if the energy was toxic or um, mm -hmm. coming from a place of love. Didn't even even it doesn't even it could be French fries. It could be some food that you consider bad, but yeah. you can tell yeah. if it was just thrown in there without any care if somebody actually put some attention to it. So yeah. I always appreciate that. And I I think it's interesting about the ADHD story. Mm -hmm. um, I talked to a lot of people. Um, even like adults now that I interact with, they say, oh, I have ADHD just so to let you know before yeah. you know, we start talking because I'm going to continue to talk and talk and talk and go all, all different directions. So right. that's always their little warning sign. Um, but I can kind of almost tell that they're, they could use, and they've already accepted that that's who they are and what they have. Mm -hmm. Now there might be a little bit of tweaks that can really help them mm -hmm. that, you know, and food, you know, food, food helped me cure chronic fatigue syndrome, right? Sure. Which is everybody says is basically something you can't cure. And I've been cured for maybe 15 years. The only time I got it again was when I got the vaccine and I got it for about 10 days and it scared me because I hadn't had it at all since then, but it must've been buried yeah. into my system. But I started juicing. I started, it was the first time in my life um, that, you know, I was tired of being tired. Yeah. And it was like, I have to try the food. Th I always ate pretty good, but going down to the basics for real eating organically, um, doing juices and smoothies and cleanses mm -hmm. and things like that. Yeah. Honestly, that was my big thing that I could, that I did to change chronic fatigue. And I, I, I think that's it. beautiful because it seems like, alternative health and nutrition is the last final approach when conventional fails, which is really unfortunate because I mean, one of the things I always tell my clients when I'm consulting, okay, I so often hear either my hormones are wrecked or I am exhausted all the time. And so I give them this checklist of, okay, check off the five. Is it, um, are you feeling fulfilled? in your life through your relationships or work because that's huge i mean who's not exhausted when they're about to embark on something super that you're dreading just say or when you are with somebody all the time who sucks your soul dry so that's a big one and then secondly how is your sleep if your sleep is not great then how is your diet Mm -hmm. You know, what are you fueling your body with? Is it depleting you of your minerals? Are you moving enough? Are you moving too much, exercising too hard? Mm -hmm. And take a look at your um, supplement nutrients. Like, is there anything you can do to boost and support your lifestyle at this time? Um, mm -hmm. So, but the food is the biggest thing that most people can't check. I'm not nourishing my body. I'm eating out all the time. I'm eating, you know, lots of packaged foods or fried foods. And so it's, I love to go through that checklist and then, you know, segue off. Okay, so you're not eating well. well let's talk about that. What does your eating look like? How can we improve it? How can we make you feel more radiant and vibrant and solid? Yeah. Well, that's why I like your book because I was not raised in a household that cooked or knew how to cook, or that was never part of my household. And when you have, when you're not raised in that, you don't have the foundations, right? So you have a lot of anxiety about that. Yeah. At least that's what my experience is. Mm -hmm. So I don't even know where to start, you know? 
but I know that I'm very picky with what I like to eat. So I love your book because actually your book is everything I needed, everything in one book, you know, and I'm not just saying that, but it's because you've got the bone broths in there, you know, um, yeah. that I know are really helpful if you're not feeling well, or if you want to give it to your animals and things yes. like that, that mm -hmm. will feed your bones and things like that. Yeah. Um, the list of ingredients. So I, that's all I needed. That's one thing I really needed. Just go to the store, give me that list. And yeah. I need that. I, don't, I know some people have that, but they only do it from a, a small specific. Yours is really start to finish. It's right. herb. It's, you know, all those things. Um, Canned goods, dry goods, freezer, fridge, like staples. It's to me, if you don't have the staples, which are the healthy nourishing food staples in your pantry or freezer or fridge, then why would, yeah, cooking is, is tedious. There's not, because every time you go to cook something, you're like, oh, I gotta go to the store and get it, you know? So I feel like if you can set yourself up with those foundations in nourishing foods, then you can look at almost any healthy recipe and go, I got it. I've got all those ingredients. I can do this right now. Yeah. And I think that is really important when you're going on, you know, kind of a health journey because yeah, you, if you don't, I'm the kind of person, oh, oh that requires bananas. I don't have bananas. I'm not going to do it. You know, it's just like, right. right. <laughs> but and there are some funky ingredients in the book, but I think you probably saw this that where there is pearl powder or moringa, it's not a make or break ingredient, you know? It's, and there are resources in the back as to where to find them if you wish to uh, amplify your nourishment in these recipes. But if you don't have it or you can't find it or you have no interest, it's not going to break the recipe. You can still make it. And what is uh, adaptogenics and healing tonics? Can you, I think yeah. that's a really interesting little area. Yeah. So adaptogenics are basically like the new superfoods. Um, but what, why they're called adaptogenics is they're found typically in um, climates that are very extreme, whether it's high, high altitude of the Himalayans and, you know, long, cold winters or extreme heat of the desert. These plants are so hardy and how they're adaptogenic is they're loaded with powerful nutrients and compounds that when entering into your body, it, it's almost like your cells recognize them and where there is lacking in your cells, they find it. And then your cells adapt to what needs to be adapted. So if you're exhausted and you have an adaptogenic like, let's say ashwagandha or rhodiola or ginseng, if you're exhausted, you have chronic fatigue, your adrenals are zapped because you're permanently stressed. Um, then those adaptogenic herbs that you can make into drinks or add to smoothies, they naturally go into the body and the body says, oh, this is for my adrenals to be nourished and, or, oh, this is helping my energy. You know, my mitochondria is boosted. And, and so naturally your body sort of adjusts to that and comes into this place of homeostasis. Oh, I just had a breath of relief. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, because you have here makaru, uh, mesquite, mm. pearl, like you mentioned. I never heard of pearl before. Pearl actually comes from a crushed pearl. Oh. Yeah, from the oyster. So it's super high in um, calcium. It's got some magnesium, and it's really good for soft tissue, so your joints and your skin and your bones. And then you have um, shizandra berry. Yeah, shizandra berry is great for um, bringing up the energy. Okay. And then you have um, the mushrooms, um, the, the different kinds. There's reishi, mm -hmm. tanga, shiitake. Yeah. So they're immune fighters, right? And cancer, he says cancer and virus fighters. So this is would be pretty interesting for people to add in right now. Yeah, and reishi, all of those mushrooms. I, so I use a mushroom compound for immune, and and did so during you know the height of COVID. And actually, it's now running rampant in our town again, which to me has evolved into a new flu. But I take a compound of mushrooms like lion's mane, reishi, sh um, shiitake, and uh, oyster. 
I'm forgetting. Um, I think it's oyster mushrooms. That doesn't sound right to me for some reason, but anyway, those are really good for the immune system. And there is a brand I really like if you're taking notes. Um, you can find it at most health food stores. It's Myco, M-Y-C-O dash, Munity. It's like my community, but Myco is mushroom. Munity is your immune system. Oh, wonderful. We really yeah, appreciate and, that. Yeah. And you can take it as pill or for children. You, it's like a cinnamon or spearmint spray. And if you hate pills, you can use that. I travel with that. Um, and I just spray it throughout my, you know, flight or wherever. I always have, I have it like my hydrosols. I have them in every corner, <laughs> my purse, my car. So you got your whole family trained too. They've got, they kind of know do. when to spray and what to eat. And oh when yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's another hard thing is how do you get other people, other, you know, around you to kind of contribute and help and, and be a part of that? with uh, nutrition and food and caretaking. Yeah. Um, it was hard because I raised three boys. My husband's always been on board. Um, he's just like total soulmate, bestie, all the things. Yeah. So I'm very blessed with him. He's been, he's had my back. We've got each other's back. So he backed me up with that, which I think is the hardest hurdle because so many of my clients were, you know, they would have their own program and then their husband's still doing the, potato chips or whatever junk food because they're like you you do your weird thing Bessie <laughs> I'm gonna still do my thing and that makes it really hard when you don't have that support but my boys were my challenge they were my medicine if you will in that you know they thought we were weird they're like why does our pantry look like a barn why do we have seeds and powders and this is just weird and if I have friends over we, we have nothing to eat. I'm like, no, that's BS. We do have, do, not Doritos, but like the natural version. They're like, yeah, the off-brand version. So <laughs> we got a lot of flack. But finally, I remember in middle school, one of them came home from a sleepover. And he said, I think I need a green drink. The so-and-sos eat really junky. And I was like, yes. I'm like, what does junkie look like? Just to test. Yeah. Oh my gosh. We had fruit loops for breakfast. And then we had, you know, uh, tater tots and grilled cheese sandwiches on gluten and American cheese. I don't even know if it's really cheese. I was like, you are getting it. Oh, um, wow. So I think, you know, you just got to love them hard through it when, when yeah. it comes to your, your roommates or whatever. And you just keep, stay in the course and you lead by example. That's, that's all I could do. And, and let them, let them discover, you know, the overload on candy, the, how tune into your body. That's what I always say is, you know, go have the foods. Yeah. Like do, you got to do your thing, but just tune in when you're eating a bunch of candy and all of a sudden you're getting hangry and cranky and you're snapping, you know, ask yourself, what, what was that? Where'd that come from? And so that's my thing is tune in, become an intuitarian. Right? Yeah. I get overwhelmed when I walk through grocery stores. Um, because I just kind of look around and I see, I try to look for air, things that don't have sugar in it or aren't processed. And just as a, you know, I always go back to community because that's yeah. really important to me. And I feel that's why I do this. And that's why yeah. you do this. Yeah. Is, you know, providing options and, and education and, and support in the areas that we're experts in or, you know, working on. Yeah. And, but I get overwhelmed. I, I just look in there. I just sit in the, sometimes in the middle and look around like the cereal aisle and just kind of feel a little bit of sadness and, and actually hope through our, my friends and what we're building here. But really, gosh, why so bombarded by yeah. so much of the of and it's just rows of it why do you yeah. need 500 different kinds of cereals and it's because they're making a lot of money yeah. and um you know it's unfortunate the the big box food you know food organizations they're in bed with the pharmaceutical organizations who fund the conventional med schools 
you know, and they do fund all the studies for what's now going to cure this cancer, that cancer, and it's really convoluted. And, you know, even Europeans who come to our country and they, they, they will make a point to visit our grocery stores because it is such a joke how many junky options we have in those inside aisles. That's why I'm always telling people, like, don't even go to the inside aisles. Just stick no. to the outside. And then... <laughs> You know, we, we can't make our own crackers and bread. This is just not realistic for most of us. So just do your best when you go shop for the crackers. Blow off the cereals. They're, they're, no. There was a study, this is actually motivating to hear. Okay. This, this helped me and the boys because cereal's easy, right? There was a study that was done on rats and they were fed, one subcategory was fed cereal, one was fed cardboard. The cardboard group fared better than the cereal group because all cereals are typically used with seed oils, so high heat to make them crispy, crunchy. Mm. All sugar aside, whatever the grain is or the nut or the seed is in the cereal, it's 99% of the time made from a seed oil and then baked. At high heat. The seed oil is like sunflower, sunflower or rapeseed or canola. And those, they'll start off, you know, healthy in their yeah. original state. But like I said in the book, then you expose it to air and high heat and it becomes rancid. And oh. then in our cells, it oxidizes and creates inflammation. I was always wondering about that because I, you know, sunflower oil, how could that be bad, right? right? Or, right. Um, but I didn't realize it was fine in the beginning. Yes. And why do they do that for preservation or? Oh, no, because it's a super cheap oil product for them. And so, so way back in the day, we were all using coconut oil, butter, lard, and tallow, beef fat, and palm oil. And they, it's expensive. And so the big food industries decided that it was too expensive to make mass amounts of food and money by using these fats. Mm -hmm. So what they did was they discovered that there was a byproduct of corn oil and canola oil that was super cheap and was going to get thrown in the you know trash anyway. So they used it and then they promoted that saturated fats cause heart disease and it took 40 years to dismantle that study and finally make the public feel comfortable over the fact that it's not saturated fats that's creating the heart attacks and the and the death rates and the disease it's the sugar and the fried seed oils that's creating that inflammation and in turn heart disease and what about palm oil Palm oil, the reason that's a problem is because it's not sustainable. So the forest deforestation is happening with um, harvesting palm, you know, from palm trees. So it's a very good oil. It has wonderful beta carotene and vitamin A in it. Um, but when you choose that, you want to choose it from like a sustainably or regenerative um, harvesting practice. And that's hard to determine. I'm and sure. it's expensive. So I have some, but it lasts for years. Okay. So <laughs> I guess, can you just go with, it? Is it, if, if it's expensive, it's probably good. Um, <laughs> no, because that's like saying, well, I use Clarins or Estee Lauder and yeah. I only buy the $200 serum <laughs> because surely if it's $200, it works, but that's also loaded with cheap chemicals. And all, most of that $200 goes to marketing, packaging, paying the models, you know, to speak of it and what have you. Um, so not necessarily <laughs> does it mean that. Well, let's go into how you kind of source some of your materials for your oils and how you determined to make that and what that whole process was. Yeah. So, you know, as I said, my background is food and the, the biggest thing most important thing to me with food is how close can I get to my source, right? Mm -hmm. So know your farmer, pay the farmer now or the doctor later. That's always been my thing. And so when I was formulating for the skincare, 
I thought, okay, I don't want to just be a beauty like skincare maker. I want to make this super intentional and I want to make this a win-win for myself, for the people using this and for the community and the growers. And so I made it my goal eventually. And I love to say this because when I made this my goal, like eventually I'm going to meet these farmers and these growers and I'm going to be farm to skin. Yes. And so I would start by just researching these very small, passionate stewards of the land growers. And then I would reach out to them in Peru or in Morocco or France and find them and then source from them. And then the goal was, and then I get to travel and meet them and like look them in the eye. And now I'm there. So um, my husband and I just traveled to Morocco in May and we were able to look the farmers in the eye for saffron, for argon, for uh, apricot kernel oil, and then the most beautiful and so expensive but so beneficial rose oil and neroli orange blossom oil. So, yeah. And before that, I was traveling. My husband and I have a, a 1990 Volkswagen Westphalia camper van yeah and so we were traveling the u.s and sourcing ingredients that um, way so that, that was really fun. fun so fun well and yeah then so now 80, about 85 percent of my ingredients um are directly sourced from the growers which is just like yay i've made it yeah and you get to hand over money to them for their their care in their prop and what they've yeah you know, and that is a, like the, a circle of, you know, just, you know, helping each other and providing it in a way that's very, you know, rewarding. And yeah. so um, I love your, uh, uh, I do have some of the oils. So you have hydrosols, you have face oil, blood oil, mattress cleansers. Um, yeah. So what is in some of these things? Just like, you know, just in general. Yeah. So. Let's see. I'm in my I'm in my lab right now, and I'm like surrounded by all the blue bottles. Um, yeah. Hydrosol is derived from mineral rich water, which is important for the integrity of the skin barrier, and it is infused. You'll like this with uh, rose quartz for unconditional self love, amethyst. Oh wow! Um, quartz and obsidian and that's just for purity the obsidian well, how, do you, um, so how do you do that do you have to crush them up or no so what i do is i have a filter like the best filter you can get the berkey okay and so we use water in that and clean water obviously from a well and then unfortunately when you do filter water like that in such an extreme filter it also um takes out all the minerals most of the minerals. So oh. then at the second chamber of the filter goes the crystals and that's infusing that water and then it's being used. And then I have my magic wand with blue soda light. Okay. And this goes in the water for an hour. Um, and that just also raises the vibration um, and then go the infusions of like rose, rose geranium, neroli, um, the one for blemish free, like acne prevention or rash calming. That's called blemish free hydrosol. That one has um, all sorts of essential oils and in a base of aloe water, um, colloidal silver, and then that mineral rich high vibe water. Can you talk about colloidal silver a little bit? Because I've gotten all kinds of different directions on that. And I'm yeah kind of about that mineral. Yeah, it's sketchy. Um, you know, so many of us go with that approach of, well, if this teaspoon is good for me, then surely a cup is great for me. And so the more is not better in this case, for sure. Topically, colloidal silver has been used for hundreds of years just um, for wound. Like, well, like we use iodine. Mm -hmm. um, they've used it on burn victims and wound healing, topical application. 
Uh, and then for internal, you know, it just takes a teaspoon and you don't want to use it every day if you're fighting something or there's a lot going around, a teaspoon a day for like a week is great for boosting the immune system and just um, strengthening the cells. And do you know anything about, um, so I've heard a lot about um, sodium, my mom has a sodium deficiency and so does a few other people that I know. And I didn't actually know about this. Do you know anything about that nutritionally and how you can naturally get so the correct balance of sodium if you're deficient? And yeah. Why yeah. I mean, it's easy because we've also been brainwashed that salt is bad for us. Right. And so everybody's, you know, cut out salt. Well, that couldn't, that's like the worst thing you can do. Sea salt has all the trace minerals in it and you need the trace minerals to support the sodium levels and the magnesium, calcium, potassium. Um, if you're drinking bottled water or Berkey filtered, like I was just talking about, you're drinking dead water. There's nothing to it. It's wow. clean. It's pure, yeah. but there are no minerals. And most of us are drinking filtered water. And so it's really important for us to bring back the balance with the electrolytes of sodium, magnesium, potassium. And it's as easy as, you know, putting a pinch, like a hefty pinch of sea salt in your water and a squeeze of lemon juice. That's great for your electrolyte balance. I'm going to tell my mom that. <laughs> yeah. Tell her not to fear sea salt. Um, and... Also, there are foods that deplete your minerals, like um, uh, the lectin foods, like tomatoes, all legumes, um, peppers, cucumbers. It's the seeds. So these plants are powerful, but they're also created to protect themselves. And the lectins are in the seeds and our bodies can't break them down so it strips our bodies of b vitamins they're called anti-nutrients and minerals if we eat them a lot yeah and oh, um, what about, um... <laughs> i know probably <laughs> thing to me. i never heard that before i'm sure your readers are like what now what can i not eat you know but it's just everything some people really have to cut them out if you have arthritis constant bloating um gluten is is also one food that contains lectins all grains contain lectins so you can still eat them but if it, it would be really smart and again this is in my book to soak them before you eat them you know and then just or if you want the shortcut take a shot of apple cider vinegar which is about a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar in an ounce of water Mm -hmm. before you eat those foods. So that helps your stomach break it down and your enzymes become active and that helps. But if you're really compromised with joint pain mm -hmm. and arthritis and lots of heavy bloating, digestive disorders, the first thing to go is usually lectins. And mm -hmm. uh, well, apple, apple cider vinegar just, you know, becomes sort of like this hero in, in nutrition, you know, yeah. over the years recently and, um, is it okay to take the pills as if people don't like the taste of it? Have you found that it still works just as good of, or have you heard anything about yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. It's expensive. Um, yeah. but I, I mean, it took me a long time to get over the taste. I hate the taste of apple cider vinegar, but Bragg's has a new one out. That's like lemon ginger. Oh, wow. And it almost has a sweeter taste. It almost gives your water like a kombucha flavor. Okay. So I don't mind that one, but I've heard, I've heard clients say that they have success with the apple cider gummies and pills. Okay. Yeah. I do that too. Um, I used to soak my almonds when, before I made my own almond milk. Yeah. So what about soaking nuts and why is that important? So soaking it opens up in the mat side. I'm such a hand talker. So picture your almond is like this, right? And so you soak it under water and that layer sort of opens up. Here we go. It opens up. And then that way it's enzymatically more active 
and then your digestive system doesn't have to work as hard to break it down. Therefore, you're not using up minerals and vitamin B to like handle the stress of that food in your system. So soaking is basically a way to break the phytates open. It's like sprouted foods are the best for you. Yeah, because I, you know, almonds are very hard on my stomach, but if I mm -hmm. soak them, mm -hmm. it just seems so much easier to digest. There it is. That's yeah. your phytate, your lectins. And then what, what about B vitamins and why are those so important and how do we find them? So the best way to find them, unfortunately, is raw liver or liver. No. I know. I, um, so most people are like, and no, you can take, <laughs> um, <laughs> you can take liver pills. Hmm. Um, you can, anyway, that's, that's the nat most natural source of vitamin, the whole spectrum of B vitamins. Okay. The importance of B vitamins is tremendous and it is on our nervous system. Really important also for our neurological system. So when we're under stress, our bodies rip through B vitamins. And what, stress doesn't have to be work stress, life stress. Stress can also be, we exercise really hard and your body's under stress. You got COVID or the flu or a cold, your body's under stress, your immune system is stressed. Um, you are in a stressful job you maybe are eating a food that you're intolerant to over and over and over. Your digestive system is stressed. So yeah. especially with digestive system, if you're eating foods that your body cannot break down, then you're very likely to be mineral deficient and vitamin B deficient. So the best way to do that is to really listen, like take a journal, write down, you know, your symptoms when you get to be bloated or super achy and then write down the last meals that you ate for the last three days. So keeping a food journal is really helpful for that. Um, and then the B vitamins for mood and for focus are really important. You can take a B complex. A lot of people have a methylation issue, which is a phase in the liver of breaking down, processing and administering into the cells. And so it's called the MTFHR gene and a lot of people actually have that. So the good news is it's really easy to find methylated B vitamins and that's key. Yeah. So assume you have it, they're not expensive. Um, and you can take a methylated B complex and, um, and just take it, you know, every day. Sometimes it gives you too much energy. So I'd avoid maybe taking it at night. Okay. But, what I do is I have liver from a regenerative ag rancher. So it's like sustainably sourced, grass fed, pea finished, like Montana peas. Okay. Um, and I froze it and then I let it thaw just for like a half hour and then slivered off little slices and layered them in a glass dish with between wax paper. And so then I'll just take like an ounce every other day and throw it in my smoothie and you cannot taste it. Yeah. That makes sense. Cause it's yeah. just, yeah. It's like your most complete multivitamin you could ever ask for. And it's so highly absorbable. Iron, B vitamins, zinc, um, liver support. If you look at naturopathically like cures like, so if you're eating, you know, the glandular, so the livers of a good clean, well-treated, humanely treated cow, then there you have it. Or elk that you shot or deer. Yeah. Um, then there you have it. Um, so let's go back into a little bit of iron then. What you, what's your advice on iron? <laughs> Iron's tricky yes. because, you know, a lot of people, especially us women, as we lose blood, can become iron deficient. Mm -hmm. um, but also the deficiency can be like an imbalance of copper and iodine and all the other minerals. And so then doctors throw iron at it. Yeah. And when it, it's more than just iron, 
then we have a whole disruption of the mineral system. So if you are iron deficient, liver is the most amazing way to uh, correct that. Um, and then also eating sea vegetables, so mm. seaweed. Like uh, in my cookbook, there's a, a recipe for broths and you put kombu in it, which is a seaweed and that's got great copper and iodine. And <laughs> yeah, it's such a resource of a book. Um, Wonderful. But yeah, so, you know, eating on cast iron can be helpful. Um, but that's a tricky one. So I think working with a naturopath is your best bet when you're iron deficient. Yeah, I definitely am going to give this to some friends. Um, so for example, I just opened up to Rose Tonic and that's how I like to do things energetically. I'll pick up and like, what does my body want sometimes? Yes. Like, but this has like fresh almond and cashew milk, which I, I make my own, you know, milk. I have a, a machine. It only takes 30 seconds. You do a cow. What's called cow. almond cow. Almond cow. Yeah. Don't you love that? I love it. It's such a game changer. You can put your, you know, hazelnut in there, um, vanilla, mm -hmm. um, date, date, yeah. coconut water. Um, this yeah. one has a little bit of rose water, which I will need to get. Maple syrup. Maple syrup is such a great alternative to um, sweet, right? Yeah. And I use honey because we have bees. So now I have a plethora of honey. And so it, or you can just put dates, you know, in your milk of choice um, when you make it. And then you don't need the the um, maple syrup. But one thing with that, if you want to cheat okay, or make it easier, is there's, I think it's traditional medicines makes a rose tea. Okay. You can put it's that in so there. so good. And so you can just use that, ro make a batch of rose tea, and then put your milk alternative in it and pearl powder if you have it if not then there's your rose tonic and you know rose is the highest vibration of all yeah so it is such a beautiful way to radiate love from the inside out and there's a reason why i love this is because you know people go to their norms you know you have your coffee yeah. then you have a little bit of water throughout the day maybe an orange juice or we have our like things that we're used to yeah. but um i think our bodies are craving different things and if you can do something like this just sounds so yummy i'm going to make it as soon as we're done but you know just just kind of venturing out a little bit that's why these books are so important because yeah. you, unless you have um that built in you're yeah. not going to be able to find it. You know, no. so that's why you get yeah. something like this, you know, you're like, I need something. I'm, my body's craving something different today, you know? Yeah. It's and that's one of the things I wrote in there is, you know, sometimes for me, if I'm like, let's just say I'm sluggish, it's three o'clock in the afternoon. And I used to have that three o'clock afternoon slump every single day. And it was because my diet was high carb. Yeah. Um, I was very active physically and I just wasn't getting enough protein or fat for that matter. So, cause I was just ripping through it. But now, so I sit down, I'm like, why am I so tired right now? And then I, first thing I do is go through it like the checklist, but it's mostly, okay, what did I eat today? Have I eaten enough? Um, and then have I been working really hard in front of the computer writing and just like, downloading and pouring through my brain do i need to support my brain or did i have a hike this morning and i didn't replenish enough like ask the questions and then like you said the nourishment comes like if we we have our go-to's sometimes just like anything in life you have to switch it up your body is like please give me something different you know i can no longer recognize this whatever you're eating this Triscuit cracker as food anymore. Your crackers and cheese are not helping me out anymore. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. yeah. And, then, and I get inspiration from cookbooks all the time. I just, I will pour through them like it's a novel. Oh and my. yeah. I love all the imagery in your book. So amazing. Yeah, Nicole uh, Wickens. She's so good. Um, also, let's talk about smoothies because I, you know, I think also, again, we get everybody talks about different things right now. Yeah. Like, well, smoothies have a lot of sugar in them because you're putting in a lot of fruit. So 
is there any myth about smoothies and too much sugar and or anything else that you yeah i mean i think that people are getting a little better about waking up to that fact um like smoothie bowls especially tend to have higher sugar counts because it's the bananas in it that make it so nice and thick and creamy um but also bananas are great in calcium and potassium i'm sorry and potassium and different minerals and fiber and um so i think when it comes to smoothies all my recipes are low in sugar they're mostly berries some will have a banana or balance it out with fat like an avocado um, so having that sugar when in the natural form of fruit is okay but what's important is that you balance it out with protein and fat so that it's not like a direct hit to your blood sugar you know to your system mm -hmm. so you don't skyrocket your blood sugar levels so that's important um those are all safe smoothies to eat anytime because they're balanced with fat and protein in them and in this tropical smoothie you have you're adding that pearl powder and, and the collagen for skin which is great for aging people who you know want to get that collagen back in so can you tell us a little bit about collagen as well? Yeah. What? So collagen originally, I remember giving it to young people who have gut issues. So if you have, let's say, like leaky gut um, or any kind of gut damage, huh. collagen is so great at healing the intestinal lining in the gut. Never heard that. Isn't that cool? Um, you want to use type three, four, five collagen. So, so that has all the strains. It's not so processed down. You want all the strains of the collagen. Um, and then, sorry. So soft tissues also in your joints. If you have joint issues, collagen is wonderful for that. It's like a lubricant. So you can imagine why it's so good for the skin. Also a soft tissue. It's like, uh, you know, after the age of 30, we slow down our um, collagen production. And so to both feed it from the inside, topical collagen is BS, it's just marketing. Don't fall for it. To feed yourself with that collagen rich food like bone broth or a supplemental collagen like vital proteins, um, it's a great source of protein and also, it has all the strains for rebuilding soft tissue and replenishing your collagen levels. My goodness. Okay. What about potassium? Because I heard a doctor say the other day that almost everybody is low on potassium. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it goes hand in hand with magnesium and calcium. You know, it's we're, we're so easily convinced to just pop a supplement, right? And so people are taking calcium supplements, which are synthetic and they're clogging and scarring our arterial tissues. Um, or you take a calcium or you just take a magnesium. And so then your potassium levels go off. So um, a, a banana a day brings you all the, the potassium you need. But if you're sweating and you're stressing, um, you're gonna go through that potassium as well. So what you wanna do is do your pinch of sea salt Okay. Um, get your electrolytes in and um, I love a banana juice. day. I was doing that. And then um, when I was starting to think about weight loss and I was looking at my conception of stuff, carbs, spot, I just heard get rid of the banana a day. But then I noticed my potassium, I could tell because I get cramps. Yes. Um, so I think yeah. that's really interesting. People are like, that's, you're just eating a bunch of fat and sugar. And I'm like, I know. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Everyone's demonized, uh, you know, all carbs are evil. <laughs> but for women, especially if you're like in your perimenopause or, or menopausal years, then you, yes, the decrease in estrogen really hinders our ability to break down and make use of carbs. But we should still be getting 30% of our diet and carbs, 30 to 40%. Thank you. So, good, <laughs> good carbs in the way of berries and mostly vegetables, you know, not, not your ticket to open up that bag of chips and crackers. <laughs> oh, okay. So what are some good carbs then? So all your vegetables. Okay. Um, 
especially all your local organic fruits right now they're in season so go for it because okay. that's when they're packed with the most vitamins and phytonutrients and um and then you know treat yourself too if you i hate to demonize crackers and cheese because i love them myself but like be wise in your selection of crackers i love simple mills brand they're almond based mm -hmm. um, so they are grain free and they do have good carbs in them but they're not as high in carbs as say like regular wheat or rice crackers are so what about dairy my again my doctor said that um he's never been a fan of cow's milk but he's, yeah cow milk is amazing for people to digest and it's a bet i don't know do you have any insight in that what did he say goat milk was good yeah goat milk's definitely easier on the system mm -hmm. um raw cow's milk is fine for some people my husband and one of my boys does great on that yeah if it's raw or at least organic grass fed but if you can get raw cow's milk and you're fine with it then great i keep trying to convince myself at times that I'm fine with it because I love like full fat yogurt, you know, with just plain full fat. I know it's so sour, but I love it. Mm -hmm. And I do love um, whipping cream in my coffee as a treat. Um, and so here's a good example. Here's how you know. Well, first of all, for me, I was drinking cream in my coffee every morning. And I was, I was like, I'm fine with dairy. But then by the next meal I would eat and I would be bloated. There's your indicator right there. Mm -hmm. It can sometimes take hours for that to unfold. The second one is if you have skin issues or brain fog, mm -hmm. or you can't seem to lose the puffiness in your body, that is a sign of inflammation. And typically dairy is the first culprit if that is a food you eat lots of. And I did a test for myself because I went through, so I've for years not eaten dairy, except for the occasional cheese, like raw cheddar. I do well with sheep and goat cheese. Um, and then the occasional ice cream, like it's only probably twice a year, but yeah. I was fine. So we went to Morocco and I was having cream in my coffee every morning and I didn't bloat. I was, and we were eating gluten too, which those together are tickets for not happy belly yeah. for me. Uh -huh. I was fine. Hmm. So I get home, I'm like, oh, I'm good with dairy now. I must be healed. And so I went for it. For, I was like, I'm gonna test the body and I'm gonna go back to my cream and my coffee. And it's <laughs> so great. Well, within, by the second week, Okay, I've never had perioral dermatitis or around the eyes, ever. It's just yeah. not my thing. For me with dairy, I would get two zits right on the, the, tri the trapezoid, like right here, back knee, two, every time. Wow. I was like, hey, back off, babe. So those two came at week two. And then I got this irritation right around the eye. So I was like, okay. I see you. Thank you. Left out the dairy. Everything subsided. Two weeks later, yesterday, I ran out of cashew cream. I didn't have any cashews to make it. So I was like, ah, I'll be fine. Cream in the coffee. By last night, this was super flared to the wow. point where my husband was like, girl, what happened? Did you like get in a fight with someone? Because it was even puffy. I'm like, yes, I did. I got in a fight with the dairy. <laughs> the dairy queen won. And it was the cream and the coffee. So, you know, and why, listening. why could you use the one in Morocco? Because it was uh, raw? I think because I was only there. I was only drinking it for nine days. And it had been a long time since okay. I had had it. So I did get these two. They they came and said hi. Um but this didn't come until I was like, oh, I'm good with dairy. I even ordered a couple of lattes. Like, I really tested the system. <laughs> so the thing with dairy is, um, especially when it's not raw and grass-fed, it's been so processed out that the body doesn't really recognize it as food. Wow. And so there's that enzo enzyme lactose 
that a lot of people lack. What about um, artificial sweeteners? I know this yes. is poison. So it is the biggest neurotoxin you can put in your body. So if you are, you know, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, dementia, really very high contributor to that. That's yeah. terrible. Yeah, my dad um, is a prime example. There's no Parkinson's or dementia in our family. And my dad has been a Diet Coke, no, Tab was his original poison of choice. And then he went to Diet Coke and literally he would drink a few a day. And to this day, so he was diagnosed with Parkinson's three years ago. And my mom has dementia and they've both been avid because that was the generation of yeah. low fat, no sugar free. And they just stayed on that train, no matter what I, you know, shared with them. That's like, that's just what we do. It's who we are. And yeah. so they both have Parkinson's. One has Parkinson's, one has dementia. And that, I mean, in all my studies, they all pointed to those diseases point to artificial sweeteners and um, rural development using DEET. Mm. Um, those kinds of chemicals and is Roundup. It, and that's considered good? I mean, is there's, uh, I'm seeing a lot of, um, there's maple sugar now and coconut sugars. And is yeah. there one over the other? Um, I mean, the in the rawest form is the best. So raw honey is the most ideal. Um, the maple syrup right out of the tree that we can get from Vermont and state in Canada, those are great. They have lots of good B vitamins in them. Um, and then for if you're very concerned about your sugar, blood sugar levels and diabetics, then like coconut sugar is good. It's low glycemic. Uh, monk fruit, although it, it typically has the sugar alcohol in it, which some people don't do well with. Stevia is a plant. Um, it's an herb. It's what can be hard for people is when it's broken down into liquid or white powder. It's so processed that a lot of people react to it. Mm -hmm. I used to grow it and, um, and I eat it combined with mint and it was, it's great. That sounds yummy. Yeah. Also, I think I'm going to go clean up my refrigerator now. <laughs> <laughs> Again, read the book because there's also this little section called YOLO. You only live once. So, like, don't get too wrapped around the axle. No, no, no. I, I'm not worried about that for me. But, yeah. you know, of course, it's just you start to go, oh, okay, wrap yeah. it in. And, you know, yeah, li little, little steps towards this, of course. Yeah. But the awareness is what's amazing, you know? Yeah. So I really yeah. appreciate that. Of course. And I mean, if you think about like one thing I love to give the analogy of is with the liver, if you struggle with weight gain or, and you know, it's just like, no matter what you do, your body is just holding on to that excess weight or hormonal imbalances or skin issues it really boils down to the liver. And so if you think of the liver as a cup, you wake up in the morning and you brush your teeth with fluoride toothpaste. So you put a few drops in the cup and then you put on your beautiful $200 bottle of conventional skincare and you're putting like a tablespoon in your cup, um, you know, and let the day unfolds. You've got your cereal, you've got your non-organic foods, you've got the air, all the toxins that you're exposed to are filling up your cup. And so at some point in the day, depending on your situation, your cup's going to overfill. Fill. And so that's your liver. So your liver over the course of the day or time, it gets so burdened with so many things that we're giving it that over time, it's like, you know what? I have too much on my plate in my cup. So I'm just going to push that out into the fat cells to protect the other organs. And there's that middle section. When you see, you know when people say that uh, forward belly fat is toxic to the heart. So that is mostly the liver dealing with overconsumption of toxins and pushing it out into the fat cells to protect itself and the other organs around you, around it. 
No way. You just described me. <laughs> <laughs> but I no think, you know, I mean, part of it too is like menopausal years, we can't break down the carbs like we used to. And things settle. And the midsection is the first place. And I'm even dealing with that. Um, so there's also that natural aging part where after menopause, you deal with some excess weight gain, whether it's three or 10 pounds, it shouldn't be more than that. But um, there's ways to balance our hormones. And there's ways to eliminate some of those toxins and, and to give your liver support, you know, just like when we meditate, or when we're sick, we, we talk to ourselves. Yeah. And so to, to talk to your liver and be like, Oh, liver, thank you so much for putting up with all the things I've, I've given you and I'm going to support you now with detox teas and organic foods and, you know, really also anger. You know, yeah. if you have a lot of anger that you're holding on to, that's, um, we, we describe people in the naturopathic world. She's very livery. And so she's congested in her liver, which makes her angry oh, and wow. agitated. Very and lovely. so we can tend to be that way when we're, our livers are congested. And so one of the, I guess we're leading just quickly into what, a, what about detoxes? Because I've heard all kinds of, obviously this is just a giant hot talk topic, right? Because yeah. things to do a lot of detoxes like um, Dr. Schultz's, um, where there's a bowel cleanse and then there's a liver cleanse and then there's a kidney cleanse and yeah. it was 30 days and it, you know, it would just take me down for probably the first three days where I couldn't sleep, but I, you know, I would feel great afterwards, but yeah. you know, I've heard some nutritionists saying that it's just way too hard on the body to do stuff like that. So do you have any yeah. context for detoxes? And I mean, I think there's a time and a place, you know, if your body's shutting down and but I think that if you're really not well, or if you know inherently that you have a very toxic life, um, then it needs to be a monitored detox a monitored cleanse. Okay. I think that liver support, you know, seasonally three times a year doing a cleanse, a gentle cleanse, um, which would just be eating like the whole 30 diet. Yeah. For 30 days. Yeah. And eliminating or truly minimizing your alcohol and yes, have the cup of coffee in the morning, but don't put all the crap in it. Yeah. Just make your cashew cream and do the, do the thing to support your liver. Meditate. I think that kind of cleanse is beautiful. Yeah. But the harsh cleanses need to be monitored and they're given for a reason. And yeah. so, yeah, if you're down and out and you have, you know, if you're in a flare up of chronic fatigue, then a cleanse is too hard on the body. That, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So I do think there's a time and a place, um, and there should, it should be monitored or done with somebody who knows what they're doing. Well, wonderful. This has been so educational. I mean, I just really appreciate your time and your energy and mm. this is glow the book the recipe book. And then all of her materials are, um, uh, glow luxury oils, which I've found around town and I've tried to support and buy them. And I just love them. I put them all over yeah. my body and thank they feel you. great. And wonderful. I'm just so glad to have met you. And I'm just thanking the universe for putting our paths together. Yes. And, um, you know, if anybody has any questions, please let me know at the liberated healer.com or, you know, go to glow luxury oils, take a peek around and send her a note. If you need anything, is there yeah. anything you want to uh, take us out on? Um, you know, I am just so grateful that our paths connected as well. And that you have this beautiful platform to spread such wisdom and spiritual juiciness throughout. So I feel so honored to be on your podcast for one. So thank you for that. Um, and anybody feel free to reach out to me either Instagram glow luxury oils or glow skin side out. Um, I, I am active on my Instagram and I'm the one who replies to DMS. And then on my website, you can contact me. Um, I do offer skin consults where I'll do nutritional guidance. And, um, and I just love to spread this information. So again, thank you for having me on your podcast. You're welcome. And thank you to all the listeners and supporters. And we wishing you well on your journey and 
you know, just continuing to rise up, raise up and build this community and tribe to help all of us. Yes. And thank you so much. Bye for now. Okay. Bye.